Jenny, would you come up here, please? This is not planned, Jenny. I know. <laughs> 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 what I'm just going to do real briefly is tell many of you probably don't know what our CDC is all about, but I want to tell you Jenny was a partner with us back in the early 90s. She was on the staff at that time, needless to say, in 2000, when we were chief executive now. What year did you get it? Let's see, 2014. 2014. Okay. So I'm going to talk briefly about what they did for Burlington. My first 10 years as mayor was 92 to 2000. The first thing we did was establish the historical district downtown. I can't tell you how much Jenny helped with that and guided us. It was huge going to all the levels to be awarded. And look what we have now. I had a couple approach me last year and told me that they're still in Chicago, but they wanted to get away. They want a home on Browns Lake, but it wasn't Browns Lake that sent them to decide that this was what where they wanted to be. It was the historical district downtown. So you can see right there the draw, something like that did. And every year we have so many applying for facades in that. Um, we can completely uh, continue creating what we have for now. Then we had the facade grants that were uh, started, like I said. The biggest thing. Um, during my first tenure was the riverfront development. On August 12th, 1997, I said this plan will dramatically change Burlington forever. And it did. And Jenny was right there with me on every step. And uh, it also goes on to say Burlington has established a new standard for downtown development. Never would be able to do it without our CDC and Jenny at the home. Uh, Jenny also was involved on my second uh, tenure, which started in 2016, uh, the downtown revolving loan fund that we started. And then Jenny, this was about three years ago, this started as a rebranding. I know a lot of you are not from Burlington, but we are no longer the Chocolate Festival or Chocolate City. We have to join the other cities to have something on our uh, signifies what we're all about now. There was a little bit when we first released it uh, this year, uh, this tournament, about they didn't like what dreams. Dreams are what these people did. It's circling around them. They believe in growing and they wanted to take a chance. They worked with our CDC also and the city. And that's what it's all about. That's what we're talking about. Dreams, what you want to do and take a chance. Uh, our CDC also did two brownfield loans and they have given out 22 local loans. I can't say enough again for Jenny. RCDC, you have made Burlington what it is today. All right, so thanks, Mayor Happy, for the introduction there. Uh, so I imagine most of you guys know a little bit about RCEDC already. Um, so we're a not-for-profit um, in Racine County focused on promoting economic development projects throughout the county. Um, specifically, I work for our business finance division. Um, so we're the ones who are trying to actually get funds out our doors into your hands. So um, I'm going to run through a bunch of acronyms here. I've already hit you with two, uh, RCEDC and then my division BLP. Um, so don't, no worries trying to remember a bunch of acronyms, but uh, just if you hear something you're interested in, give me a call. Um, that's my name up there. Find me after. Uh, I got business cards. Otherwise, just Google us. 
you'll definitely find me. It's 2022. <laughs> um, so just want to get you an idea of when you should think about VLP and giving us a call. Um, majority of our financing programs are for uh, fixed asset purchases uh, like real estate and equipment. Um, so if you're doing a, a fixed asset purchase of any, of any sort, especially in Racine County, we can do some lending outside of Racine County as well. Uh, definitely get one of, one of us a call. Uh, I know there's a lot of bankers in this room that work closely with us. So if you're uh, connected with one of them, uh, they'll definitely shoot you in our direction as well. Um, benefits of doing that with us, better terms on, on our loans. Not that the banks in this room don't offer great terms, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know we can we can make some below market offers uh, and help reduce your down payment into those type of uh, investments. Um, also, free money. Does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so free money grants. Uh, so we've got a number of grant programs throughout the county. Uh, like Mayor Happy mentioned, um, there's one in Burlington specifically. Uh, we have them throughout the county. Um, they sort of come and go uh, quite often. So my best piece of advice is to reach out to somebody at RCEDC, make sure you're on our email list to get our newsletters. Um, that's the best way to keep up to date on everything that we've got going on in that realm. Real quick, want to mention one grant we have available right now since we're out of Burlington here uh, on the west side of the county. We have one grant. Uh, it's got pretty strict eligibility criteria. Uh, but if you're eligible, it's a great program. So I just want to mention it real quick. Uh, eligibility, key eligibility, eligibility criteria, you have to be outside of the city of Racine, but in Racine County, um, you have to have five employees or less, and you have to fall within low to moderate income wage categories as owners. Um, so if you think you might qualify for that, definitely reach out. We've got a bunch of money that we're trying to give away. Um, with that, I don't have time for a Q&A. I imagine there's probably some questions out in the crowd, so come find me after or, uh, you know, uh, find me online and, and reach out at any point. Uh, and with that, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, it's the exclusive sponsor for today's event. I see a bunch of community state bankers out in the crowd right now. Uh, this is Becky McClellan, uh, Assistant Vice President and market uh, president for Burlington for Community State Bank. Um, she's been with Community State Bank for over seven years and has over 10 years of experience in finance. Her primary responsibilities as market president um, are to collaborate with Burlington businesses, uh, nonprofits and municipalities to help promote community growth and meet their unique business needs. Does that sound pretty good? Sounds pretty yeah. good. <laughs> uh, among many other areas of business banking, she's an expert in uh, small business lending products and specifically um, a lot of the programs through the SBA as well. Um, Becky also donates her time to the Burlington, com Burlington community um, by serving as director uh, on the Burlington Chamber of Commerce Board and participating as a member of the Rotary Club of Burlington. Please help me welcome Becky McClellan. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Um, this is a great opportunity for everyone to hear not only the great resources that you know different banks in the area have, but also RCEDC. We partner with them quite often. Um, you know, Community State Bank, we truly believe in the community part of everything. We love to reinvest into our communities that we have our markets and um, that we serve in. And if a bank isn't necessarily the best fit, we do have resources like RCDC and BLP that can kind of make those dreams come true and, and build, um, build the, the dreams that you have. So we will get to our speakers and we are starting with Bevan Dawson. Um, Bevan and his wife, Anna, they are Burlington natives. They moved away for some time and came back in 2014. Um, with the help of organizations like RCEDC and BLP, they took the plunge to design this beautiful building that we are in the Loop Commons. Um, they took one of the biggest eyesores in the city and turned it into what it is today. Um, they can host, they have space upstairs for photography. You can have a collaboration space, um, host parties, and have a beautiful place to connect with each other. So, Ben, I will let you take it from here. Cool. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Bevan. I see 
And your eyes are all like, you wore the purple shirt, huh? That's cool. Yeah, it's tough to find clothes that were put right there. Um, so we are, um, our story isn't really that long. We're Burlington natives, right? And um, we grew up here, went to school here, you know, St. Mary's, Catholic Central, all that stuff. And, um, you know, I know all the, I know all the folksy stuff, right? Um, like we got a really fun view of our city because I, I I know all the the, the little folksy elements like uh, you know we all sled it down the, the sledding hill at the water tower and stuff and uh, we bring all our friends that our city smells like chocolate and stuff so that's pretty cool <laughs> and then um it, you know like I'd always skip high school to go to JJ's right so if you guys are like in that same in that same vein if you know what JJ's is or don't that's a bummer um, <laughs> so we are uh, we know all the good stuff and uh, and yeah like your next question if you're not from Burlington is like I do know Tony Rowan. So that's, that's pretty cool. Anyways, um, he's on the sign. It's funny. It's, uh, so, um, so when we were, when we were kids growing up, we kind of said like after high school that like, oh, we got to get out of here. The small town's kind of stifling us, you know? And, uh, so we took off and we're like, we're never coming back. Um, and I'm here. And, uh, so, um, we lived up in Twin Cities for about a dozen years and, um, it was great. We loved it. You know, good community. Um, crazy part of the city we loved it like big, big city amenities all that stuff um and uh then we just decided to kind of like start putting our values first we had kids you know like like you do when you move home and uh, so we moved home and uh just kind of all at once we like said the phrase i wonder what houses cost in burlington and then we saw a house and just bought it <laughs> and, uh, and uh, that was it yeah, so we, we came back a couple weeks later and we were just kind of here so um i started uh i was an electrician i, I owned a small company in st paul minnesota and then uh we moved back and we just started another uh, electrical shop where we do mostly like lighting control and um, temperature control shades, things like that. All the, all the smart stuff for your, your buildings. And um, then we started like we remodeled our house, which is exciting. And we're like, oh, we're establishing our roots and all that stuff. And then we, uh, we immediately got thrown in because I was the only member of a church that uh, had any commercial experience. Um, I got stuck as the general contractor for the Lifebridge Church building. And uh, so we remodeled that and we just loved the idea of like making Burlington better. So that kind of like really stuck with us. That was cool. So we, uh, we started the dream of having, having another one of those. Like, there was like a for-profit version of one of those. Um, and so we, uh, yeah, we kind of came up with that. So then we, you know, while we started dreaming about like, what could we do? You know, the, the biggest problem was when I was at the church, um, doing the building project, I was gone from my family all the time, never saw them. And uh, as an electrician, same thing, you know, I was up in attics by myself, and it's kind of a drag. Um, so I wanted to, like, be near my kids, be near my family, you know, kind of invest in the community, like, see other guys during the day, other people. And um, so we said, uh, we got it, we're going to start a climbing gym. And then uh, step one, there was figure out how to run a climbing gym. We didn't know anything about climbing, but we did know that we liked it. So we, uh, we just like, um, we knew that this was like a hole in the market. We wanted to do it. So we, um, we just, <laughs> the way I said it here is uh, we just started dreaming of all these cool ways to like cover up our ineptitude about this, this one thing that we had. So um, we started looking for places where we could do other things, kind of the, um, uh, you know, whatever, just the goal of making Burlington great make Burlington worth this thing. So um, after we purchased this, uh, you know, dumpster fire of a building, we kicked out all the animals and all that stuff, and we started, uh, <laughs> we started uh, like piecing together all the things that were gonna happen. And I don't know if uh, you guys have noticed, but we were gonna uh, open this space to a, a couple local brewers from Waterford, and they were gonna start a brewery here, and we were gonna be the first brewery in Burlington, um, but you guys ruined that, so that's fine. <laughs> Uh, also, it's my fault because it took me two years to complete it. So it took uh, it was mostly me doing this project, which is also a drag. And that's uh, during the project. That's when we met through our bank. You know, the other guys. Sorry. Uh, we um, we uh, we met BLP, uh, RCEDC, those guys, and they helped us with a grant of like more than thirteen grand. It was crazy uh, because they had the same vision that we had about like making Burlington worth visiting. So we, you know, we jumped off the ledge to say like, let's take the worst thing and make it like worth visiting. Um, and they kind of said, like, ah, you should. And so we put together, like, a pretty cool uh, business model and everything, you know, started to make sense. And we could buy it really cheap, so that's good. And then, um, but, but why? You know, like, why do we do it? Why do we do any of this stuff? Why did Racine County believe in us? All that stuff. Um, because I said it again, like, they have the same vision that we do. Make this place worth visiting. There's, I mean, there's so many good like amazing people that live in this area. Like, um, I don't know if you know how, like how many patents have come out of the, uh, 
the industrial park or like, uh, you know, just even having Nestle's chocolate here is crazy. Or like the, the rubber factory down the street that's in every toilet in the world, you know, it's crazy. So uh, we bring people in with our industry, which is crazy because we're talented 10,000. So there's like, there's something here that's, that's really special. And, uh, and we like that. So um, we started thinking like, what do we need? What are the holes in the market? And the litmus test to get into our building was, does this activity bring people together? So we, um, and, or, or does it encourage autonomy, right? So that's the other, that's the other side of things. We, we don't want people, we don't need more isolation, especially like in the middle of the project, COVID happened, all that stuff. So we're like, oh, okay, this is, this is really bad. We don't want to do that. Um, so we started with like, um, you know, a meeting space, like a, a, an event space like this, right? So, so you guys can come out and hang out together and meet each other and meet awesome people and all this stuff. So that was a big one for us, um, the event space. You can also have your, your bridal showers and stuff like that. You can pay up the front, that's right. And then um, <laughs> we also do, uh, you know, we have a photo studio on the third floor, which is really cool. Um, so you can rent a photo studio if you're an amateur or professional. It's a really, really cool space. We'll show you, we'll give you tours of all these things later, but um, it's a really cool space. And photography really brings people together. Think about like the best picture. You like look back, you know, going through your, your, your books in, at your family table and stuff. You're like, oh, I remember when this happened or whatever. Like, it's all fine memory. So a photo studio was an easy one for us. The podcast studio is the uh, same thing. It brings people together. You can't, you know, it's it's very rare that a podcast works with one person. So uh, it's something that encourages people to come together and laugh and, and talk and things like that. Um, podcast studio does bring out the weirdos for sure. But um, <laughs> mostly, mostly in a good way. That's, that's legit. Um, so we have, uh, <laughs> we of course have private offices right above us. We have uh, kind of a neat uh, model for offices where we have long-term offices up there. We also have like a, a day rate office where you could rent us for the half day or a day because we, uh, you know, we were small business people for a long time. Still. And, um, you know, sometimes you just wanted to like show somebody your prints and you could, the only place you could go was like a coffee shop. And, you know, like you got the knitting club next year, like the high schoolers making out. And you're like, oh, here's your new house. You know, it's just a weird vibe. So we wanted to like make a professional space that like made sense. You can make it your own, you know? So it's really cool. That's why we built the, the offices. And uh, last is the Burlington Coffee Company over here. So we, um, we roast coffee out of here, the Burlington Coffee Company roasts out of here every Monday, and we, we supply coffee to like gooseberries and uh, FAB and uh, things like that. So it's a, just a really cool folksy thing that people say like, you guys are like one of those, that's really cool. And that's kind of what we wanted to do. Like when people came into town, they'd say like, no way, you're, that's cool, you know, and just like spark their interest so that they stayed and like went to all the great places that we could, uh, you know, that we give our coffee to, stuff like that. So, um, so that's it. Uh, we're here to make Burlington worth visiting, like like these guys, RCEDC, which does events to like meet you guys, and BLP. Um, uh, we also exist to, exist to fill holes in the market. You know, like uh, there's not these things around. You can only either you work out of your basement or you know you work in an office. And there we're kind of the in between. We're a really cool space. Um, but what we found again, like to bring it back, we really love our neighbors. Like the, the Burlington population, the Racine County thing, the southeastern Wisconsin thing is is really weird. Uh, I was thinking about ways to say it, and we are. Um, we're a gritty bunch of, you know, like intrepid entrepreneurs. We're like, we're, you know, like we make it through the winters here and, uh, and we build pretty things. Right. So like, it's a, it's a really weird mix. We make things and we survive together. It's really cool. So that like camaraderie is kind of a weird deal. Um, and, uh, some of that camaraderie is like one of the best examples of that is, uh, these guys, like, um, you know, like all these guys up here, but Bernard and Michelle, we, we partner a lot. I say partner just because I want to be on their team. Um, they do a lot of things out here and I, <laughs> I jump in on it, but they, um, you know, they're hosting events all the time. So like bringing people together of like uh, holiday parties, you know, uh, you know, on the street German fest, like concerts, things like that it just makes it so cool. So, um, and these guys do like blood drives and all this. It's like so cool to see what happens and we want to be a part of it. So that's why we're here. Um, but that, that's it. That's all we do. We just want to make Burlington worth visiting just like you guys. So uh, we just want to say thanks to, you know, you guys, of course, our CEDC. Thanks for doing this. this is wicked cool. Thanks for the beer, you guys. Also, wicked cool. And uh, yeah, enjoy your rest of your day. Thanks. If you have any questions, we'll do a QA later. But thanks for doing Awesome. Well, thank you, Bevan. And there are tours after, correct? For sure. Yeah, yep. so stick around if you have not seen the space. It's great. Um, well, not, not me, Bevan. We'll give you the tour. Are you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah I'll guess where I'm going. So. Um, the next speaker is Tim Sullivan. I This was a great project to be a part of. You are so fun to work with and to see that building, which is a standard press building, become low daily and become an awesome tap room. Um, a little bit about Tim. In 2019, they came back, they being Tim and his wonderful life, life. 
his wonderful wife, Claire. <laughs> she is your wife. She is your wife. <laughs> um, so they came back to Burlington. Tim grew up here. And uh, did Claire, she's from Minnesota. She's from Oregon. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well, see, so look, look at me, you guys. Um, but Tim did grow up here. They came back and um, they were living on the West Coast for a while. Tim learned from some of the best brewers in the industry, which is why his beer is so good. Um, so they came back for, um, in, to make Low Daily the, sorry guys, the goal for Low Daily um, is to make Burlington a destination for craft beer drinkers and a positive force for the community, which a lot of the events that they have held speaks to a lot of you know, their character and who they are as people. So Tim, if you want to give a little bit of a background. Sure. Yes, hello. Uh, I'm Tim Sullivan. I'm from Low Daily, just right over there. Uh, I grew up here, born and raised, um, right after high school here, I started a, a fun little habit of collecting student loan debt <laughs> with nothing to show for it. So I did that for a while um, and then started moving around, checking out different places. Ended up on the West Coast because I followed a girl out there. I was now my wife, so that worked out. <laughs> and, um, and then was fortunate enough to live next to some crazy fella who was a home brewer. So I started tagging along with him on brew days, which was just an excuse to <laughs> stand around and do this. Yeah. Um, and then it, it started to get pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, all throughout my twenties, I had manufacturing jobs. Um, and so it, I started thinking about beer as a career and it just kind of made sense um and so i started looking into schools to kind of get some some education uh for it and so i got accepted into a program in san diego and so we we're my wife and i were actually back in burlington when i got accepted in the, the, the san diego program and i think it was in february after a particularly harsh winter and we looked at each other and we're like yes we're obviously going to move to San Diego mm -hmm. yeah uh, so I moved to San Diego started school uh, got a job on a bottling line at a pretty large brewer there um, and then you know after a few months moved into the, the cellar of the brewery as an assistant brewer and um, had a great time there my wife got a job up in Portland, so she moved up there to start that job. I stayed in San Diego to, to keep learning a little bit. Um, and then I got a job at a brewery in Portland. And so I moved up there and started making beer there. And that it was a brewery that was just growing at an incredible speed. So the, the subcontractors basically became our uh, co-workers um, got pretty used to them um, and after a couple of years of that uh, we we were we found out we were having our son and we kind of looked at each other and like well, what are we what are we trying to do out of life um, and we decided to come back home and uh, be closer to the family and, and try to start something so we came back and, and uh, Shout out to, to Bob over there. My dad yeah. was doing the searching for, for buildings that could host a brewery. Um, and, and we got the, the standard press building. And so we came back and got to work on that. Um, shout out to Becky and everyone at Community State Bank and, and RCEDC. To, if you know anything about brewing, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? You know that uh, a brewer needs financing. For money. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and so we, you know, we we got the project rolling and. 
you know, and then uh, uh, reality happened and um, we started construction in March of 2020, whenever, when the world started to shut down and we signed our business loan uh, in our car, like in the drive through <laughs> of the bank. <day. laughs> That's what we were doing now. Uh, so we knew it was going to be kind of weird. It kind of gave us a crash course and just knowing that we were going to need to be quick to adapt. Uh, and then, you know, our, our goals, our stated goals about, you know, just wanting to be a, as big a presence as we can in the community and, and try to help not just our business, but, but everyone else around here. Um, it kind of shifted from that to like, just trying to make it pretty quickly. Um, and so we're, we're pretty excited now that we can kind of, now that we, you know, got it, got, got through it. Um, we're pretty excited to hit the ground running and do start doing more of the things that we we set out to do um, and bring as many people to this town as we can um, and just make good beer show people a good time and uh, go from there so I think I'm done with my speech. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. And opening a brewery in the middle of a pandemic, I'm sure it was terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have done an amazing job, and you're a great asset to the community. So congrats to you guys. Uh, our next speaker is also a brewer, um, Bernard. He and his wife had started a business in Burlington here in 2008. As that business grew and as they thrived with that, they realized they ran out of space and needed a bigger space for that current company, which gave them the opportunity for the runaway to open up um, their brewery there. Bernard was a home brewer, uh, shared his love of the craft with family, friends, anybody I think that would probably take a, take a taste and um, it, you've done a very good job. It's delicious as well. Um, all the opening during a pandemic was daunting through thoughtful planning and through resources like RCEDC, they were able to turn the runway into what it is now. So if you'd like to do Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Bernard Peterson. Um, I own the Runway Brewery. My wife, Michelle Peterson. She's the one who does all the work behind the scenes, and yeah, I just do it here. Uh, so they gave us a little bit of an outline on how to talk to you guys and what they want us to talk about. So the first thing is about us. So uh, Michelle and I both grew up in Burlington, and I think a common theme is when you're young and, and you're graduating from high school, the first thing you think you have to do is get out of here. And then you get out of here and you realize, really, it's not that bad of a place, you know? <laughs> Especially when you start, like, thinking about starting a family and maybe starting a business. So um, we both had corporate jobs. We were doing good. And we bought a couple of rental properties. And then things kind of changed. And we were managing a lot of tenants. And we decided that we wanted to try our own business. So we opened a property management company and started managing um, properties for other people. And we thought we lived down towards the border. We thought located in Burlington was a good spot because it's kind of central to Racine, Kenosha, Milwaukee. So we opened a little 400 square foot office. And we sat there and we went through the newspaper and called people with four rent ads saying, I see you have an apartment for rent. Maybe we can rent faster for you, get more money for it. So that's kind of how we got started. That's MPC Property Management. That started in 2008 and it kind of took off. So now we have 35 employees there. We manage over hundred condo associations, 500 rental units and some commercial properties. So through the years we became familiar with, and I, one of the things I like about RCDC is helping with my pronunciation. <laughs> so I didn't say it well, RCDC, like I can say that charcuterie board over there. <laughs> I should definitely dig into after this. Uh, we recently brewed a beer that had a fruit that I would have used to call uh, ake, and now Jackson <laughs> taught me it's acai. <laughs> so, yeah, so my pronunciation has improved. Uh, we have two kids, Maeve and Finn, 
Finn is nine, Maeve is seven. They both go to school in Burlington. They go to Burlington Catholic School. We don't know where, gonna, where they're going to go to high school. I'm a VHS guy in the show. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, another fight. Um, I've already won the first fight because I now have a brewery. So. <laughs> That's why they want something. Kids have to go to Catholic Central. I might have to just let them go to Catholic Central. So what happened with the brewery situation is we had our NBC office in the building next door, and we outgrew it. So we bought a couple more buildings across the street, moved everybody over there, and we had an empty storefront. And I was on my way up north with a bunch of buddies fishing, and it's a 17-hour drive, and I wrote a business plan for brewery. <laughs> yeah, so I got back, and before the property management, I was in sales, software sales, so I knew in order to get a yes, you got to get like five no's. So first time I pitched it, Michelle, it was a hard no. Second time, <laughs> a little softer no. Eventually, I got, show me the business plan, and I went through it and sold it on her. So I think as far as uh, telling you about the runaway, I think we focus on the name and kind of like dives down into what it is. So the runaway, the name of the runaway came from like a historic article that um, I found over the historical society and finding old pictures of the building. So I had this article about runaway horses and carriages cause all like the havoc back in the old days. And we kind of wanted more of a historical nature to the business because it's in the historical district. I serve on the historical preservation board. We've always been involved with trying to push Burlington forward. So that's one of our passions. We want to make downtown like the heart of the city. We want more businesses here, restaurants, bakeries, breweries, Maybe a coffee roaster if somebody really wants a coffee. <laughs> but those main things. So it's it's kind of like where our hearts always been. When we bought our first building down here, there's a lot of empty storefronts. So as you see in a lot of small Wisconsin towns, the downtown areas like they end up being empty and the, there's sprawl and strip malls and stuff like that. So it's always been our passion, like to put Burlington back on the map. So a place where like, it's cool to live, a place where you can go out for a nice dinner, you can get a beer, you can have, go get it to a bakery. So that's always been our passion and that's how I sold it. So we wanted to, um, I've been a home brewer for 10 years. I'm not trained as a professional brewer, but over the years you learn the processes and um, make a beer and you serve it to people and they say make more of it. So that's how we got started. Um, we're what's called, an, um, we call it the micro pub. So in UK, there's what's called micro pubs or small community ale houses where you go and they have no technology. So has anybody ever been to the runaway in here? Yeah. A couple of people. So there's no TVs, uh, there's no digital menus, there's no digital tap lists. You know, it, you want to focus on the beer and conversation. So that was really our focus. It's someplace you can bring the family sit down, you know, have a bunch of kids staring at their tablet or um, some guy that just pay, cash his paycheck and he's playing on a poker machine. So, you know, we paid attention to when we go to other places, things that bother us. We wanted to bring some value back into it. It's beer. We have limited hours. We're not open late because we don't want that crowd either. Um, and we want to support the community. So we try and do a lot of collaborations with other local businesses as far as food goes with beer. We brew beer with Bevin's Coffee. We brew beer with Doc Stone's apple cider. So we try and support the local businesses. We have a limited food menu where we also try and support local food companies like Kelly's Pot Pies, Wilson's um, Meats. We have hometown sausage. Hometown sausage, a charcuterie place. Yep, Weiss Meats. Weiss Meats. So that's kind of our thing is we want to support the community. We have live music on Saturday nights where we try and support local musicians such as Georgia Ray. So um, those are all important things. We offer our space to community organizations, especially nonprofits on days we're not open where they can use it for free um, if they need to have meetings and whatnot. So that's kind of about the runaway. The future of, we have a small space. We think that's part of the special nature of it. It's small, it's quaint. We make small batch beer, which is the nano brewery. So nano brewery typically brews three barrels or less of beer. We brew two barrels a day, um, which allows us to like make specialty beers, turn them over more often. And uh, nano brewery. Future of the runaway. We think we're in a good space right now. We're doing really good for being two years into it. We have talked about possibly some um, 
sure it's fair too, but so I haven't got a hard no yet. We <laughs> a couple more beers we can talk some more. But really that's what drove us is it's just the love of Burlington. It's a great community and wanting to help out. We love bringing more people to Burlington and doing things that the community can come down three for. So we have Loop Day coming up in June where we close the loop. So we love closing out the street down here. Often enough where people like it, but we're not making the other business owners mad. Uh, so we have Loop Day and we have our October Fest. We support Tall Tales Music Festival. So it's all about community for us. RCDC made it super easy. So there's all these different programs and loans and grants you can get. I made one phone call to RCDC, met with them, kind of pitched what we wanted to do, and they kind of said, we can apply for this grant, this loan. Worked out really easy. They make it um, super easy. And that's all I like that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Bernard. And as you had said, if you guys you look on their Facebook page, there's always something going on at the Runaway. They are huge supporters of the community. If you have an event or something you want them to get involved with, call them. They're very happy to, to host or to help out in any way and fill up your glasses with either of their beers because they're both wonderful. So, Thanks. Um, yeah, make sure that's good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you need a refill? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so our next speaker is David Thompson with Clinical Psychology Associates. Um, David Thompson is a child clinical and forensic psychologist. He's probably one of the most interesting people that I know. I love talking to Dave. Um, in 1991, he opened up his first um, clinic, and it was actually in the basement of Mays, what used to be Mays Insurance. Uh, clinical Psychology Associates is now the largest outpatient mental health clinic in Burlington. They provide services to children, adolescents, and adults, as well as forensic services um, across the nation, really. Uh, as they continue to grow with mental health becoming a very you know, important thing in today's society, bringing more attention to that, they needed more space because as there's you know, more people needing these services, more therapists, more space is needed. So Dr. Thompson came to us and we worked with DLP to make sure that we could get the space that he had envisioned his new office to be in um, a reality. So if you would like to tell us a little bit about yourself and the process. Thank you. Uh, I'm David Thompson. I'm one of four David Thompsons in uh, Burlington. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the oldest, but I'm not sure. Um, probably the best looking. Nor the David Thompson and the Edwards and the Sky. So, so it was a dark and stormy night in in Michigan. Um, it was the it was Devil's Night. This is true. The Devil's Night. So it was the 30th of October back in uh, in 1989, and uh, so um, I had a one month old son. It's over there, and uh, so I had a few other kids too. Uh, and uh, the company that I worked for uh, used me as a troubleshooter, so they, they needed to send me to Wisconsin uh, to one of their local facilities uh, for a week, three at the most. <laughs> Still here. So, uh, after a year or so of going back and forth uh, every weekend uh, on an airplane and getting great, uh, you know, great uh, mileage on that. Um, then Midwest Express went out of business and lost all this money. Well, after all of that, we decided to move to Burlington. So uh, we, you know, we uprooted the family and, and moved over. And uh, uh, I, I was uh, I was permanent at this place, uh, but I I didn't really like the the uh, company, and I decided that uh, I, I should be my own boss. So I decided to learn everything about running the business that I could, and then get out. So I did. Um, I, I stayed there until uh, until. June of 1993, uh, but in 1991, I opened up my practice, uh, just a private practice in the, in the cellar, not just the basement, it's the cellar of what used to be Mays Insurance. And it was great um, because it was still old back then. We had our own vault um, in, in the basement of the former bank, and, and there were occasionally you'd be sitting there talking to a client and a centipede would run across the wall. <laughs> so I said, you know, we need something else. So I, I bought this little, um, little bungalow up here across the street from the firehouse. Um, 
and uh, and I, I was there for for years and years. Um, after uh, after about twenty some years, it got a little it got a little crowded because I had added various practitioners uh, in our practice. Um, we had the we, we, we had a branch office in Waterford, uh, just because we couldn't all fit in the building at the same time. We previously had a branch office in Delvin um, that we just rented for a while, uh, but it, it really got to be, it, got to, it was getting crowded, okay? And, and the, the building was not exactly what we envisioned and it was kind of cramping our style. And so then, um, you know, my, uh, my daughter-in-law, Aubrey, she's over there somewhere. She ran away. She ran away. Oh, okay. yeah. She's probably next door. Run away. So, so she went to get one of the other David Thompsons. Aubrey, Aubrey kept getting on my case. You need to, you need to get a bigger space. You need to get a bigger space. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do all that. You know, I'm old. What's going to happen? I'm going to die, and then you're not going to be, you know, not going to be a practice, right? So, um, Aubrey went off and got her. Uh, she got her 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 clinical social worker. Um, credentials, and she joined the practice, and then she really got on my case um, because now there was no room for her. Uh, so she had to schlep into Waterford all the time. It just wasn't working out. So I've been looking at this old bank building over here for years and years and years. Um, it, it's the uh, it's the old Burlington Savings and Loan for those of you that were around back in the early '70s, and uh, it, it had uh, it had been. Um, they, the Associated Bank had worked out of it. They moved down down the road, and and so they they put it on the market. It never it never really sold. And some investment bankers from various states bought it and didn't do anything to it. They they put some offices upstairs, and they had a, a hospice downstairs, um, and and it just they didn't really didn't really do anything nice to the building. So it started to kind of fall into disrepair, and and the. It got to the point that the the tenants that were there uh, on the first floor left because eh, it wasn't a comfortable place to be, so the building was empty. Then 2017 came, and for those of you that weren't here in July of 2017, let me tell you, it rained. Uh, we, we had the floods. Um, power went out uh, in various areas, and, um, and and that ended up causing about. Um, oh, three, three and a half feet of water in the basement of that bank building, which, by the way, is built to bank code, which is really, it's really solidly built. But it was flooded, the electrical was inside, everything zapped, everything was trashed, mold, it was just not good. And so they just, they, they, they let it sit and they put it on the market. And the price came down from about a million dollars to about three quarters of a million. And it came down to about half a million then it came down a little bit lower. And then I started to look at it and say, hmm, I wonder if I could do something with this. And uh, after my arm was severely twisted by my daughter-in-law, um, I, I said, well, let's let's look into this. So um, I talked to Becky and uh, said, hey, Becky, can we buy this building? So um, so we, we looked at, at buying the building. The problem with buying a building like that is you're not buying a building, you're buying a project. Uh, so uh, we're, we're talking rehab. And, and we're talking not just a little bit of rehab. We're talking ripping out all the electrical, and we're talking about replacing all the HVAC stuff, uh, new furnaces, new air conditioning, new walls, new everything. Uh, so um, it was like a major construction project. So, and of course, you know, I'm just this little, little uh, you know, sole proprietor with, you know, a little hobby farm with goats, you know. So, uh, seriously. So, so I said, I said to Becky, "What can we do here?" So, um, she said, "Well, you know, we can help you with the construction loan, but uh, you also might want to look at uh, at an, you know, the uh, uh, an SBA loan." And I said, "Well, that's that's government, you know. That's that's a ton of paperwork, and, and who wants to do all that stuff?" She said, "Well, BLP will help you." So, uh, she gave me a referral to BLP, and the folks at BLP were just really easy to work with. Um, they came in, they walked through the building, they didn't turn their nose up and say, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding. Uh, but uh, so they, they helped us, um, they helped us with the financing. So um, I, I was able to put together a combination of loans for, through uh, Community State Bank uh, for uh, construction and then ongoing, and also um, a substantial amount uh, through the SBA uh, with the assistance of BLP. So BLP walked us through the process um, they handled all the weird paperwork that you have to do with, when you deal with the government because they know how to do it and they know how to do it very efficiently. Um, they told me what kind of paperwork I would need. Uh, they worked with my accountant. 
um, whenever uh, whenever I got some request for something weird that I didn't understand because I'm not an accountant. They, you know, they they would just work directly with him and uh, get what they needed. It was a very smooth project. And then it got even better because after after we got the loan approved, um, and we were working on on getting getting the construction done and stuff so we could actually close things. Um, and by the way, in the middle of all this, of course, it's it's the pandemic. So we started. Uh, I, I bought the building in November of 2019 and started. You know, we we basically broke ground on rehab in March. Uh, so and, and finished in June. By the way. So all that time, they uh, they found a, a couple of things. They they found that well, you know, if you get this done by a certain date, then. Um, the uh, the federal government will give you free money. They'll pay your they'll pay your interest, uh, and, and you don't have to make any payments for a period of time. So that was really nice. Uh, that worked out just fine. And then of course one day I was minding my own business um, and talking to Karina, hi Karina, um, and Karina said, you know, you might be eligible for uh, for a, a, a city of Burlington uh, grant. So uh, again, BLP helped with that process. And uh, we were able to uh, to get a, a ten thousand dollar grant through the uh, through the city of Burlington, uh, and uh, for for capital improvements. So um, with with BLP's assistance, we were able to put this whole package together, um, get an interest rate that has an APR of I I, I think it's like just under two percent. Yeah. And uh, so when, when he says better than better than uh, than bank rates, I mean it's not not just bank rates, but it's lower it's lower than normal. It's it's uh, it was a, it was a good deal. Um, yeah, so we're happy with that. Um, some things that you should know if you're gonna if you're gonna go for this kind of a loan, um, you got to make sure that you keep your your, your receipts and your paperwork. Um, keep it all organized. Uh, they'll tell you how because you have to come up with all this stuff. You have to show these show these receipts and and. and and, and keep lists of things that you buy and stuff like that. You know, like how many paper clips you get. And, oh, wait a minute, that's supplies. I can't do that. So how many cartons to put the paper clips in? You can, you can that, that's a, an allowable cost. So you got to have, you got to know what's allowable and what's not. So that's important. Um, the, um, the other thing, uh, there was something else I was going to tell you, um, and it's my mind completely because I'm old. So it'll, it'll come back to me in a minute. Um, but uh, I will tell you that working with BLP was uh, was quite easy, um, and, uh, and and I would I would highly recommend it. So I'll be around if you have questions. Dr. Thompson's facility is a perfect example of kind of the resources of partnering with the bank and with BLP. There are so many different avenues that just because say one grant option or one lending option doesn't necessarily fit what you're trying to do. There's so many different places that we can look and make sure that you guys get your. And, and if, if anybody here really wants to open up a business, we have 3,300 feet on the second floor with an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> so you guys heard real life stories of how this has kind of come to fruition for each of these um, business owners. Do you guys have questions, whether it's for Wes or I or any of um, the guests up here? Yeah. So how do you, you have a, somebody has a crazy idea, how much do you help to kind of say, that sounds like a great idea or yeah, nice dream, but it's really not going to come to fruition. I mean, how much, where does that line lay between the entrepreneur coming in? You know, Bevan is a good example, coming in, going, I could build a rock climbing thing. Well, how much is that like, well, yeah, it sounds good, but you got to go further than that because obviously Burlington may not support this whole building for just one thing. Where does your organization help with kind of solidifying that business plan of the idea is actually worthwhile to continue down that path. How crazy is your idea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no idea is really too crazy. Um, it's just how much work do you want to put into that crazy idea to make it become reality? Uh, there are a ton of 
people that everybody, I'm sure in this room even know, you know, Burlington and all of our surrounding communities are pretty tight knit. Um, we're all willing to help each other. But as for the financial institutions, you know, we'll sit down with you, Wes and BLP, they sit down and say, okay, what have you thought of? And then really look at what your crazy idea is and see what next steps you have to take or what people can we put you in contact with. And then again, it's kind of where you want to take it from, from there. If you I think getting through the wipes is the hard part. Once you get to these, it's a lot easier. Spouse approval. Yeah, spousal approval first. There's also some um, some business development groups out there um, that have volunteers uh, from uh, you know, uh, corporate executives and stuff who volunteer their time to help you revise uh, your ideas and, and come up with a business plan. So there, are, those groups are out there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to use these grants if only for assets, or are you looking capital? Is that something that's available? Can you repeat your question? Uh, she was wondering if the grants are just for assets, or can you use it for working capital? Yeah, so the grants and the loans, I, I breezed through real quick. You know, I'm talking about there's maybe 15 different uh, items that are included under those umbrellas. Um, so not necessarily just for asset purchases. That's more on the lending side. Um, the grants have a variety of different uses of funds. Um, so if you have anything that you think might be a fit, just give one of us a call. Um, that's the easiest way. You can look on our website. Uh, we have a lot of that information on our website right away, but no offense if you don't uh, totally understand it. It's, it's a lot to sit through. So that's what we're here for. Yes. Um, just to follow up on the entrepreneurial side, the University of Wisconsin also has an entrepreneur clinic in the business school um, that works with, I know they, they breweries, they do a, a number of um, programs. So that's another resource. If you're talking about crazy ideas, you throw it at them, they'll also provide resources to kind of help work through it if, if, it, if you, you know, are accepted as part of the program. Okay. And yeah. one that we actually do refer a lot to, uh, Parks, I just love this. Yes, yep, that's exactly what I was just going to say. Yep. How are we doing on time? Great. Great. Yeah, lots of fun. Lots of perfect. Great. Um, so I guess I'll ask you guys some questions, put you back on the spot if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sound good? Yeah. Seven, you were yeah. fun. I guess for others, um, we'll just do the general question. For others considering starting a business, what advice or tips do you guys have to kind of put the crazy idea into motion or just to to get started to get ball rolling? Yeah, this is pretty legit for me. So Matt, your uh, question about crazy ideas. So this was certainly crazy. And uh, we came through with just a ton of data. Like we, we had to sift through uh, like other, you know, like find other small towns that made things to work or whatever. We had to like do a ton of, uh, a, a ton of surveys and stuff and just assume people were telling the truth on them or whatever, you know, like, um, and try to prove that they were valuable surveys. Uh, but it's just a ton of, if you can, you know, like ask a ton of people and if everybody says like, that's great. Uh, you have to find a way to put it on paper so you can take it with these guys and say, like, look at what they said. And uh, that was it. So we just put tons and tons of data in, like, look at this small town that did this, this one, you know, like, based on population and stuff. And we just put this really confusing, huge packet together and said, like, I think we can do it. What do you think? <laughs> so that was it. I would say, like, uh, cash flow is a big thing. So anytime you're going to run a business, you, you need money, so you got to pay people, pay your bills, and stuff like that. So even if Aunt Betty's good at baking pies, just because she's good at baking pies doesn't mean you can open a store and, like, sell pies. You, you have to be able to bake the pies, sell the pies, pay all your bills also. So, you know, I'm a big cash flow kind of guy, so you got to really look at the numbers and see if it works on paper. Well, even you're talking about. Yeah. That... But he just said it rings true for me very much because you know I I was definitely someone who was came came in and was like, I just want to make beer. And my wife and I, we never owned a business before. We believed in it so much. We just thought like, you know, we're we'll make it work, we'll figure it out as we go. Um 
But yes, I would agree that cash flow is important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned that very quickly. All right. Um, let's see. Is there anything that you guys didn't talk about that you want to lay, or does anybody have any questions that you thought of now? No. Uh, you buy a building with an elevator. Mm. Uh, <laughs> talk about cash flow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elevators are exciting, but uh, overrated. <laughs> That's one of the obstacles of yeah. that project. Do rent with an yes, I do have a place to rent with an elevator. Yes. I'm fine. Really um, recently renovated. <laughs> Works great. Right. It came out of cash flow. Oh, it didn't come out of cash flow. No. As uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, what's the, the, the biggest struggle you have right now? You gotta write down the line. What's the thing that keeps you up at night the most? Personnel. Personnel? Um, that's a good question. For, for me, like I've been so hands-on with every aspect of the business so far. It's I don't know. I, I think it's a just choosing a path and just crushing it, you know, because you can think about you can think about what the right decision will be until the end of time, but just like making a decision and just going for it. And just, you know, there's no wrong decision. <laughs> Our uh, My biggest issue is, uh, you guys are probably all thinking since you've been here, like uh, telling people what we do. So like marketing, um, in a, in finding your voice, I think that's super hard. Getting, uh, getting the word out about what you do, you know, like even week by week. So like, I'm sure none of you know we have a climbing competition next weekend because that thing doesn't exist in the industry. In the so like, uh, so like getting into your uh, social feeds, getting into your, um, you know, the science that's correct, but in the historical district, you know, all that stuff. So marketing yourself is way harder than anybody told you that it's going to be. So that's uh, that's what I stay awake at night thinking about. Tell people what we do. Thank you. I think the most important thing for us is get a customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <We try. laughs> and then we have two. And then we're about this huge. Yeah. Uh, what are some marketing you know, tactics that you guys have found successful as entrepreneurs and starting up your own business? So I, I from the crappery perspective, it's like when Tim and I were both opening, you're like, oh, another place is opening, so like Oh man, he's opening a brewery too. So there's some of that. Like Burlington hasn't had a brewery in 60 some years now. Like two are going to open the same year. So there's some concern there, but it's actually been, I think, to both of our benefits because the craft beer industry kind of has a really loyal following. So there's people that travel. I mean, we've had people from different states and they trip, they buy these books and travel around. So I think it's brought a lot of people there. So I think from a marketing perspective, as far as like getting involved in the industry itself, has been really good. And then also just community, social media kind of stuff has been great for us. I found that free services attract people. So if you give your product away free, um, it does a couple of things. I, I'm serious. Uh, it, brings, it brings people in the door, uh, which is important. It exposes them to your work. And if you do quality work, uh, they tell other people. Uh, so uh, and, and it's a good way to establish um, some throughput in your business, people coming through. Uh, so uh, free services are one way to do that. Here's to free services. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, the community say thanks. <laughs> We're going to hand out money, but beer's more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What would you say has been your best or most resultful mode of advertising? Ours is like face to face. Um, we're really slow growth uh, on purpose. I mean, that's why I, I, I kind of built it all myself. If we would have hired it out, it would have been seven times as expensive and wouldn't work. Um, so we, we build really conservatively, but just to get in front of people so we can take the time. Um, I think your vibe comes through if you're nervous because you overdid it on the spending and you're like, we need to get people in. Are we going to die? Like, people get that. 
and it feels forced and it feels weird and stuff. So I think uh, getting in front of people for us, when people come in, um, it's a it's a big deal that we're we're the warmest front desk you're gonna see, you know, and all that stuff. And, and we really care about what you're doing. We we care about all that stuff. And I think uh, for us, that's been the most powerful thing because we get repeat customers like you're gonna have to pay to finish that weird wall in the hole over there. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's a bite itself. We're weird, but when people like us, they come. We've we've really just done the the free marketing thus far on social media. Um, we're just now really looking into what's going to make the most sense where we put our dollars to get people from, especially like Lake Geneva. You know, we're right now we're thinking about all the tourists that go to Lake Geneva and. Where, what places to target there um, to get all those tourists to come here for a day, you know. Um, it's just, it's kind of an ongoing thing. Like, so we'll, we'll find out. But. Yeah, definitely free, free stuff, social media. We'll do, a, we do a couple of events where we want to attract uh, senior citizen clientele and we pay a couple hundred bucks to put an in the paper and they come. So that that, that works for, for a certain clientele. It's getting less and less. And I don't think any of us spend a lot of money on the newspaper for uh, those reasons. But when you want to get that sort of uh, market, it definitely works. But yeah, word of mouth, read social media, kind of the fruits of people with more special events. We just need to. People that have no right? Always. Yeah. I was just saying, I think the biggest misconception in the commercial world, being that I sell it, which is nice, is that programs like RCDC, DOP, you don't need a million dollars in the bank to, to launch your crazy idea. You really don't. I mean, it, your credit score might not be perfect. It doesn't have to be commercial. There's a lot of ways, there's a lot of flexibility. I think too many people are scared to attempt their goal. So talk to you, talk about the loan, talk to them, see what they can do. And I agree. I mean, I didn't get under 2% less, but uh, it's still, it's a, it's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal rate. And I probably, I mean, maybe at the start I couldn't do it. If I were to pay the full retail or whatever, and now we're doing great. So thank you guys for everything you do. Mm -hmm. That wraps up the Q&A portion again. Um, tours, make sure you talk to Bevan and anyone else that we'll be giving them. But um, thank you guys so much for coming out. We very much appreciate the attendance. If you guys have any questions, you can contact anybody um, from DLP. You can come to Community State. We appreciate everyone. So thank you.